What's the word, y'all? A couple days ago, we tried to predict the Western Conference standings. You know what? I appreciate y'all because the reception on that video was a lot better than I anticipated, especially when you rank in teams. So, so thank you. But now it's time to do the flip side in this Eastern Conference. And, and West was tough. East is tougher, if you ask me. But before that, let me tell you about this event. We are throwing October 28th. So that's just a little ways away. New York City, we are pulling up and doing a pop-up shop for Enjoy Basketball, but also we are doing a meet and greet. The shop is from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. And then the meet and greet slash panel slash live Q&A is from 6 to 9, but you cannot get in after 6 if you don't RSVP. So it is 131 Green Street in New York City, Friday the 28th, 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. You got to RSVP. We are already close to capacity. So uh, if you're in New York and you want to pull up, be sure to do that. And of course, the pop-up shot. So we got exclusive NYC merch. So hit the link in the description. All right, y'all. So I'll put the link to this as well. We made this. This is enjoypredictions.com. Um, shout out to everybody that used it after the last video. I was just scrolling through my Twitter. And my whole mentions was everybody predicting they standings using our website. So thank you. But here's our Eastern Conference. Where do I, where do I start? You know what? I don't feel confident. You know how in the last video, I was like, I feel pretty good about the different Nuggets being the one seed. I don't really had it this year. I kind of look at the Eastern Conference in a couple different tiers. But you know what? That's not true. I think Philly's going to be the best rec regular season record in basketball. James looks pretty good. Joel Embiid is going to give you an MVP caliber season again. And Tyrese Maxey looks amazing in the preseason. Again, it is just preseason. But I was saying this before preseason hit. If you watch the podcast, this is like a month and a half ago. I said I had the 76ers winning the Eastern Conference. And I think in that moment, I was saying that they were my team to win it completely, like make it to the finals. I don't know if I'm going that far no more, but I still feel really confident about their ability to win in the regular season. They have a perfectly built regular season team postseason we can have a conversation once we cross that bridge but in the regular season i just don't see a world where they don't end up one of the top seeds unless obviously big injury but like we're assuming whatever let's do the, the bottom tier team so i'm thinking about orlando indiana detroit i guess charlotte as like the bottom teams that's bottom four and you know what as the worst team in the league i'm kind of feeling indiana because in the second half of the season, after they traded for Tyrese Halliburton, I think they were like 6-20. and 20. You know, they were really, really bad. And I do believe that they're going to end up trading Miles, and that's going to take some wins away. They're going to trade Buddy, and that's going to take some wins away. And I think they real life looking at this year's draft class, like, oh, we want one of those top dudes. So I think that they're going to be towards the bottom. Are they my bottom team, though? Yeah, I think, I think they are, Indiana. It might be a rough season, but it will be worth it once the lottery odds come out. The next team, and and I'm thinking it's the no, actually no. Let's uh throw them down. This is how it works. This is the functionality of it. Even before the mellow ball sprained his ankle, and it is a sprained ankle, so he'll be back in a couple weeks. I was telling the world that Charlotte feels like a team that should be tanking. I can't guarantee that they're gonna really go out there and buy into the tank because it is Charlotte, and they haven't really done that since Michael Kidd Gilchrist. I think they should. For the sake of their organization, this should be a year where they like, let's be as bad as possible. Let's see if anybody want Gordon Hayward. They, we just extended Terry Rozier. He's, he's going to be a player that people want at the deadline. And I would hope for the sake of their organization that, that I am right here because this is the only way the future of their team looks good other than LaMelo Ball. They might have more talent than a team like Orlando or Detroit. Even that's probably pushing it. But I just don't feel good about their chances this year, man. I, I know they've been a playing team over the last couple seasons. And last year, they actually got 10 wins better. But losing Miles, as far as we know, I, I know there's still a chance that he comes back. I, I, I don't think so, but there's a chance. Losing Miles and not replacing him with anything and not upgrading the center position just tells me that they're not going to be very good. What is the next team here? It is between the Orlando Magic in the Detroit Pistons and the Washington Wizards, I will say. I got I got a lot of love for all three of these organizations. I'm trying to figure out, I think Orlando is the type of team that might show you some flashes in the first half of the season and they remember, oh snap, we still want to get good lottery odds and they going for the second half of the season and shut some people down or do what they have to do to finish pretty low. Again, I honestly think that the Wizards are going to try and they have talent on their roster. I think Detroit has a ton of talent. Oh, I think Detroit has a ton of talent, but will ultimately decide that they want another year of being towards the bottom. That's that's how I feel. I would not be surprised if this was the case for Detroit, though. Honestly, I, I really like their roster, but I do believe that um, they might make some changes come deadline. Might get an extra little pick for Bogdanovich, get him and flip him the Kenny Beecham way. 
Um, but okay, those are my teams on the outside looking in. Now let's talk about the top 10 because that's where things get iffy. When I'm thinking about my two seed, the teams that, that are coming to mind are Boston, Miami, and Milwaukee. I'm going to give Milwaukee the benefit of the doubt because as long as Drew, Chris, and Giannis have played together, they win like almost every game. That's what it feels like. They win a large, large majority of their games when they're playing together. And as of right now, everybody is still healthy. And I'm just going to assume that they're going to have a healthy season because they have had that for the last couple seasons until we got to the playoffs last year. I feel pretty good about their abilities. Even though they're not a team that I think cares about regular season wins, they just have the top three guys that is, even if they're not caring, they're still too damn talented to be losing a bunch of games. So I put them there. Even though Boston's second half of the season scares me a little bit, it felt too good. You know what I'm saying? And I, pre hey, listen, when it was starting, I was telling people, hey, look out for the Boston Celtics. They went on the run to get in the finals. But I think if, if it was a little bit too good, they're going to be miss missing Robert Williams for some time. The Ime Udoka thing is something you got to think about. So I will put them in the three seed. Now, four in my mind, I do, okay, I'm going to say this because I've said it before. I even made a whole video about this. I don't feel great about the Miami Heat this season, but I have this level of respect for them because it's this, this is like, well, it feels like the hundredth year in a row. While I look at their roster, I'm like, man, they missing a little bit of this. They got a lack of depth, and they always put it together. They always do. So, like, even though I don't really like their roster, I might just give them the benefit of the doubt because I've I've seen what they have been able to do. So, you know what? I'll give it to them. Even though low key, I I kind of want to go like here with it. I'm gonna give them the benefit of the doubt as of right now and say that they're. They're the four seed, but that could change. The biggest wild card in all of this is Brooklyn. And as I'm recording this video, Ben Simmons is playing against the Milwaukee Bucks, and he is hooping. And they look well oiled against the Milwaukee Bucks, who are actually are playing players. So that, that's the hardest team to predict. Because I think if everything is going perfectly, the Brooklyn Nets can easily be a top three seed based off talent alone. But y'all know it takes way more than just talent to have a, a good record. You know what I'm saying? It takes cohesiveness. It takes good coaching. And it takes people buying in. And what we've seen from the Brooklyn Nets, at least in this last season they have, is that it's been rough for them not to buy in. Now, they have had some um, lack of luck when it came to injuries and stuff. And they were one shot away from being in the, in the finals a couple years ago. But this roster is different from that one, you know? I'm putting the Bulls at nine. Sorry, Bulls fans. It hurt, it hurt you. It hurts me to do this. Um, but I think our roster, in comparison to a lot of the other people above us, just it's not ready. Especially with the Lonzo Ball. We've made videos about this. If you want to hear me talk Bulls, you can watch one of my other videos. I just don't think what we did last season, the first half, is going to be uh, replicated. That second half of the season, I don't think we're going to be that either. We're probably going to be somewhere in the middle. And I think somewhere in the middle is like this, like a 43-win team. And 43 wins in the Easter Conference right now is probably putting you at the ninth seed. I'm going to put the Knicks here. The good old classic Chicago versus New York in the one-game elimination to see who's going on to play for the playoff spot. It's a good storyline. I actually really like this Knicks roster um, a ton. And I would not be surprised if it was this way around. But I'm going to give my Bulls the, the little... Um, the bias edge, if we'll call it that. These last three teams, I don't I don't know exactly what to do with, if I'm being honest with you. Who do I believe more in Cleveland or Atlanta? It's probably Cleveland. But, like, you can't tell me if this is what we did, if this is what I decided on. Cleveland did all of that to just make the plan. Atlanta traded three first-round picks to make the plan? That feels wild. But I feel super confident about the Toronto Raptors, right? I, I feel like their defense is always going to be good. I still question their three-point shooting ability, and that's going to come with, with time and stuff. But what they showed us in, this, in last season is that they're going to be good. And that's with them being unhealthy for a lot of it. Ojan and Obi feel like he missed 40 games last year. I don't know the exact number, but it feels like 40 games was missed by Ojan and Obi last year. They did improve their depth just a little bit, bringing Otto Porter in and then bringing in Thaddeus Young, Thaddeus Johnson. So I really like them. I think they're too good to be a playoff team, but like, I can't fault you if you think Atlanta or Cleveland are going to have a better regular season. Hey, the Brooklyn thing is throwing this whole video off. It's throwing the whole video off because I could see them again being as high as up here, but also it not working at all and they end up in the plan. You know what I'm saying? Talent-wise, not a lot of teams better, but like I mentioned, it takes way more than that. So I don't feel good about them being here. I don't feel good about these two either. 
I don't feel good about it. Cleveland is so has so much talent. And you know what? I'm giving Cleveland the benefit of the doubt to be a top six seed. And this is my reasoning behind it. And it, it's not it's not based in some crazy logic. Last year, they had the worst injury luck in all of basketball. For half of the season, they were guaranteed lot to make the playoffs. And then they had a Karis LeVert injury right after they traded for him. Jared Allen missed time. Evan Mobley missed time. Like they had such bad injury history. And they still ended up in the play-in last year. There's no way they're going to be that unlucky when it comes to health again. And with Donovan Mitchell being added to the team, I would feel so crazy with them. I might do this. And then Atlanta, I just I just don't. I know that the offense is going to work. I know people are saying, oh, how is Trey Young and DeJounte going to play together? I feel okay about the offense because last year they were the number one offensive basketball. And even if it takes a little bit to get it all to jail together, I still believe it's going to be a top 10 offense. But do I believe that the defense is going to come together like people might think it is? I don't know. I don't know. But to see the offseason they had, and then to see the offseason the Bulls had, and be like, oh, they're going to be slightly better than the Bulls, feels weird. Now, I will say this. I said in the last video, just because the team is 4-5, and five, this could be a same record tiebreaker type situation. This could be a half game difference. You know what I'm saying? Again, I'm, I might... I'm keeping the Miami Heat at four as of right now out of respect. Legitimately out of respect. But I don't love that roster. And Jimmy Butler is one of my favorite players in the history of basketball. I don't love their roster. With, with Kyle Lowry being slightly older, a year older than last season, him not looking great last year. Again, part of that could be because he was out of shape. He had the injury. Then he left the team for some personal matters. I understand that. But he, he hasn't been the same player. And let's just say the last two seasons than the year before that. They still, I still don't know their answer for the power four position. That's, that's still going to be out there. And I still do question their depth a little bit, but like I said earlier, they always figure out a way to, to make it work. They got a couple wild cards, like Victor Oladipo. Is Duncan Robinson going to be back in the rotation as an elite level three-point shooter? The only thing I feel pretty good about is my top three. And one, one order, one way or another, my top three I feel pretty solid. As long as everybody's healthy, which you never know, knocking on wood, but you never really know. I feel pretty good about Philly, Milwaukee, and Boston having the top three records out east, one way or another. One, but the rest after that, it's what things get iffy. I feel pretty good about my bottom four. <laughs> I mean, bottom three. Because like I said, I think Detroit could make some make some noise. Or, or maybe they can't. Maybe they won't. Maybe I'm projecting too much on their young roster just because they picked up Bogdanovich, you know? Jay Nivey, it might take Jay Nivey half a season to really find himself kind of like it did Jalen Green a year before. You know, Jalen Green, it didn't take him half a year. It may take a couple months. But you get what I'm saying. I could definitely see the comments saying I'm a little bit too high on Toronto. I don't. Th I think. I think they're gonna be really good as long as they're healthy. This don't feel good, guys. I'm just the only. The thing that's bothering me the most out of all of this is looking at Atlanta as the eight seed. That is killing me right now. But I think that's where we're going to. Remember, this is just me trying to predict it. I'm gonna be wrong on ninety percent of them. If you watched the last video last year when it came to the Western. Oh, let me see if I can find my standings from last year. Me trying to predict it. Hold on. I can't find it. But one thing I do remember is that I was still. Feeling pretty good about the uh, the New York Knicks last season. I felt good about the Bulls, but I think that was heavy bias, and it ended up being pretty solid. Um, but I'm just letting y'all know that there's more misses than hits when we're doing something like this, and it's just the nature of the game. Leave a like, subscribe, RSVP if you're in the NYC area and you want to hang out for a couple hours. Hit the link in the description to play. I guess it's not really playing. To predict your own standards and tweet them out, man. This is what you got to do. You hit share, and you can subscribe to the newsletter, which you should do. And it just copies, and you can go to Twitter and just paste them. Boom. Just like that, you can have your tweet out, and everybody can be talking. So um, I will be there in the comment section to see what y'all got to say.